We will now proceed with session three, ensuring cultural tourism for all through digital transformation. This session will discuss the latest technology trends and advances and showcase examples for examples of universal accessibility in cultural tourism. I would like to invite Mr. Paul Shen, head of the Digital Development Department of Palace of Versailles on the stage to moderate the session. And also, I would like to invite all session speakers on the stage. Waiting for Mr. Honda. I don't have any presentation. Me. So, okay. okay. Good morning to all. Um, first, yeah, Mr. Honda. <laughs> First, I would like to thank uh, the UNWTO, UNESCO, and the Republic of Turkey Ministry of Culture and Tourism for giving us a chance to address publicly one of the challenges that art institutions and artists are facing today, accessibility to all. I'm pleased and honored to present this panel on technology, accessibility and culture, ensuring cultural tourism for all through digital transformation. Artworks on Artworks on heritage are to be seen and accessible by the widest audience. It can be in museum, landscapes, worship places, public or private institutions, or palaces, to name a few places where you can see artworks. In some cases, a medium is necessary between artworks and public, and more and more often this medium is made of technology. It can be videos, mobile application, virtual reality to name a few. Being accessible also means also mean being still here. In some cases, you cannot see the artworks anymore for, uh, because it has disappeared for different reasons. This is why the UNESCO programs on preservation are so important, including program on promotion of such preservation like Visit EU World Heritage Program. There are also private organizations working on digital reconstitution for maintaining a digital accessibility to some places that unfortunately no longer exist, and we will speak of some of them later on. To reach this goal of accessibility, public and private sectors are working together to make most of artworks on heritage uh, accessible to everyone, including people with disabilities, which is very important. No one should be excluded from culture and artworks. This also includes digital accessibility to people who cannot reach physically, for various reasons, the art places to enjoy, the, to enjoy them by other means. I mean that accessibility can be an issue for people with uh, visual impairments, but it can also be an issue for people who cannot reach a place for uh, economic reasons, for example. In Versailles, for example, for people with disabilities, we propose a mobile application where visitors can read or listen to any content proposed. For people who cannot make the trip to Versailles, unfortunately, we also offer digital tools to experience some of Versailles from far away whether it is virtual reality project through partnership with Google or Orange, for example, or a full digital exploration as the one we are currently proposing in Singapore in order to discover Versailles from elsewhere. And this experience is 
plan to tour in Asia for everyone to be able to see for free uh, most of Versailles through digital artifacts. Even if nothing replaces the emotion and experience of an authentic encounter with a place like Versailles or museum, those tools are pertinent both for people with disabilities and for people without any, if that exists. Now, I will give the floor to our distinguished guests. Let me introduce them to you. So, Mr. Dominique Roland, Deputy Director General of Innovation and Digital Development and Focal Point for the UNESCO Creative Cities Network that we heard yesterday, and is also an Artistic Director at Festival at Anguin les Bains in France, will present how smart city can make their heritage accessible. Thank you. Bonjour à tous et merci tout particulièrement euh, au ministère du Tourisme et de la Culture de Turquie et euh, bien entendu euh, l'UNESCO. Oui, le, le numérique, je vais tout de suite commencer, le numérique joue un rôle euh, en définitive de connecteur d'interface naturelle entre le tourisme et la culture. Oui, alors pour une ville comme Anguin-les-Bains où je suis euh, directeur, je suis en charge de l'innovation, pour les arts numériques et en même temps du réseau des villes créatives, puisque nous sommes au sein de ce réseau. Je coordonne moi-même le cluster Media Art. Eh bien oui, l'office du tourisme de la ville est associé à un centre d'art et puis en même temps dans une recherche qui est l'émergence de nouvelles formes de tourisme expérimental et qui serait en définitive une recherche d'expérience globale. Alors la ville a développé pour cela un écosystème. Cet écosystème, il est autour de la création numérique et qui s'articule aussi autour de cinq piliers fondamentaux. C'est à la fois l'art et la culture, l'éducation, le tourisme, l'économie et la coopération internationale. Oui, mais en intégrant des artistes et des habitants dans des projets de tourisme culturel, la ville apparaît comme un territoire d'expérimentation des usages. Alors, en tant que directeur d'un centre d'art, mon intervention se centre ici sur l'intégration des artistes dans les projets de tourisme culturel et sur les défis de cette collaboration et ce qu'elle implique, bien entendu. Notamment en ce qui concerne l'inclusion sociale, à la fois, euh, évidemment, la promotion de la diversité culturelle et surtout la durabilité. Mais quand on parle de technologie, souvent... On parle d'applications qui sont peut-être quelquefois toutes faites ou qui sont, on pourrait penser, applicables dans, dans tout, sur tous les sites et dans tous les pays. Je crois qu'il y a la construction d'une différence qu'il faut poser localement à l'utilisation des technologies à partir du patrimoine, à partir du patrimoine immatériel, bien entendu, et du, et du patrimoine euh, historique. C'est-à-dire ne pas faire du numérique cosmétique. Alors, c'est vrai que tous ces projets impliquent des artistes, et nous en avons fait l'expérience, en réalité augmentée, avec des applications mobiles, pour offrir une personnalisation plus poussée des contenus, c'est-à-dire un travail graphique, esthétique, qui se distingue de propositions faites par les entreprises du domaine, un travail de narration, de la scénarisation, de l'écriture, du storytelling, et puis véhiculé, bien sûr, par, di par différents biais. Alors, je vais, voilà, je vais vous montrer donc cette application mobile qui, est, qui reflète l'identité thermale, puisque Anguin est une ville thermale, à côté à 12 km de, des champs élysées mais aussi sa modernité en tant que ville créative des arts numériques de l'UNESCO. Cette application permet de révéler l'invisible et de visualiser des éléments cachés ou disparus de, du patrimoine historique et culturel de la ville via la réalité virtuelle ou augmentée ou encore en réalité superposée. Elle permet également, à travers des témoignages des habitants de différents âges, de mieux comprendre l'évolution de la ville au fil des époques. Des personnes âgées évoquent par exemple leurs souvenirs d'enfance liés au lac, à l'environnement, à des situations qui étaient des situations de, de témoignages sur les conflits euh, également. Et l'implication d'artistes dans les projets de tourisme culturel offre également une nouvelle forme de tourisme expérimentiel, c'est-à-dire plus global, plus riche, avec une approche pluridimensionnelle, c'est-à-dire le traitement de la dimension visuelle, sonore, olfactive, tactile, 
à travers toutes les utilisations que nous avons à partir de, je dirais, de collaboration avec des scientifiques, neurosciences, avec les industries créatives, effets visuels qui sont issus du cinéma notamment. Nous avons une, une installation d'un artiste qui s'appelle Adlin Schweitzer durant la Biennale des Bains Numériques, donc un festival d'art numérique, qui est un voyage panoramique qui offre à un casque de réalité virtuelle un point de vue inédit sur la ville. Alors c'est une expérience. Au décollage, le son que l'on entend est celui des moteurs d'un drone, puis peu à peu il s'évanouit, parvenu à 150 mètres de hauteur, qui est alors le participant, un avion, un oiseau, et ainsi, Adelin Schweitzer souhaite questionner la perception de la, ré de la réalité, bien sûr, et ses altérations, notamment des interactions avec la technologie, et qui sont au cœur de son travail. Depuis plus de dix ans, nous accompagnons ces projets, avec une, évidemment une participation à ces expériences d'une douzaine de minutes avec un comédien. C'est en quelque sorte un chaman technologique rompu aux improvisations, et ce chemin est là pour les faire entrer dans l'expérience, c'est-à-dire faire entrer le visiteur. Et ce que conclut l'artiste, il dit, car cette notion qui prédomine, la technologie n'est pas une fin en soi, l'important, c'est l'expérience d'une rencontre humaine à travers la technologie. Enfin, l'implication d'artistes dans des projets de tourisme culturel favorise la rencontre véritable avec un espace et ses habitants. Le tourisme est souvent vécu comme une excursion dans les coulisses de la vie locale, correspondant mieux aux aspirations d'un visiteur qui souhaite pouvoir s'immerger, participer et créer. Je vais vous montrer l'expérience d'un collectif, qui le collectif MU, voilà, qui a créé avec les enfants de la ville, grâce à une application sur smartphone, une déambulation autour d'un parcours sonore géolocalisé à la fois documentaire et fantastique, c'était en 2014. Cette balade se composait d'enregistrements sonores de sons d'oiseaux abrités dans des parcs, combinés à des chimères musicales et visuelles, créées par les enfants lors d'ateliers. Les enfants et les passants étaient aussi invités à découvrir de façon interactive et ludique eh bien, la, diverse, la biodiversité par le biais de la création musicale, c'est-à-dire là, avec un art sonore géolocalisé à partir d'une application sur smartphone. Cette approche implique le plus grand respect de l'authenticité socioculturelle, oui, des, celle des communautés d'accueil, bien sûr, de leur patrimoine, de leurs ressources naturelles et de leur diversité. Enfin, je voudrais mentionner pour conclure quelques récentes innovations technologiques en, manière, en matière de tourisme culturel et leur impact sur la préservation de notre patrimoine culturel mondial, conformément aux objectifs de développement durable du programme 2030 des Nations Unies. Dans ce secteur de tourisme culturel, les villes doivent constituer de véritables guides virtuels. Oui, je dis guides virtuels destinés à valoriser leur territoire ou alors, en, ou autrement dit, d'en faire des territoires augmentés, c'est-à-dire vers une perception qui est pour le visiteur avant même d'atterrir, avant même d'arriver de, de, sur, sur le site. L'intelligence artificielle et les bases de données sont désormais mises au service des conseillers voyage et sont destinés à enrichir des solutions de compagnons de voyage basées sur des applications mobiles, d'où l'importance que l'on doit accorder à une collecte qualitative des données, l'objectif étant de créer de la valeur. L'expérience du visiteur améliorée grâce à la réalité virtuelle superposée à titre individuel, mais peut-être également de manière collective. Et je vais vous montrer une expérience qui est intéressante, euh, qui est euh, Framestore, qui est embarqué dans une ville, dans un parcours avec un vrai bus, mais les fenêtres de ce bus eh bien, euh, vous montrent un autre paysage et vous vous retrouvez sur Mars. Et je vous invite à le regarder. C'est après ces, voilà, ces, ces slides. Normalement, voilà, ça devrait démarrer. Ah De... Je n'arrive pas à le... Non, ça ne veut pas. Bon, mais écoutez... Euh... Dommage. 
dommage parce que cette vidéo vous montre comment euh, on traverse un paysage par des vitres de ce bus qui euh, montre euh, nous sommes sur Mars. Finalement, c'est un parcours et une expérience collective. Et euh, nous avons également, euh, dans le domaine plus spécifique, euh, des robots d'aide aux tailleurs de pierre, c'est-à-dire pour tout ce qui a été euh, finalement des, euh, des choses à reconstituer, c'est-à-dire des pierres, euh, des sites. Et euh, aujourd'hui, nous avons la technologie est aussi au service de la reconstitution de sites qui ont été détériorés par le temps ou par les conflits. Voilà, j'en je, ai fini. And now, please let me introduce you to Mr. Seyyid Ali Demineur, member of the board of the Turing, which is the Turkish Automobile Association, an amateur and international organization dedicated to tourism and the automobile, with more than 3,000 members in Turkey. Thank you. Uh, dear guests, distinguished guests, first of all, I would like to say welcome to you, and I will continue my presentation in Turkish. Değerli katılımcılar, bu sahnede bulunup bu büyük organizasyonun bir parçası olmamıza imkan tanıyan Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Kültür ve Turizm Bakanlığı, Birleşmiş Milletler Dünya Turizm Örgütü ve UNESCO'ya teşekkür ederek Türkiye Turing ve Otomobil Kurumu adına sizleri saygıyla selamlıyorum. Dünya değişiyor. Olaylara, sorunlara, konulara, kurumlara ve sektörlere bakış açıları da değişiyor. Önceden devletlerden beklenen atılım ve hamleler artık özel sektör ve sivil toplum kuruluşları tarafından da yapılıyor. İşte Türkiye'de kültür ve turizm alanında Cumhuriyet'in ilk sivil toplum kuruluşu olan 95 yaşındaki Türkiye Turun ve Otomobil Kurumu da inisiyatif alarak büyük bir projeye imza attı. Bildiğiniz gibi Türkiye 18 daimi ve 77 geçici olmak üzere toplam 90 5 mi oluyor? 95 adet UNESCO Dünya Kültür Mirası alanına sahip. Ancak bunların pek çoğu dünya tarafından tanınmıyor, bilinmiyor. Dünkü oturumda Çekya Kültür Bakan Yardımcısı Sayın Jiri Yüzyentek de aynı durumu dile getirmiş. Ülkelerinde 12 adet UNESCO Dünya Kültür Mirası alanı varken sadece Pırak'ın bilindiğini, tanındığını belirtmişti. Demiştik ya, dünya değişiyor. Artık tanıtım ve reklamın da tanımı ve uygulamaları değişiyor. Sanallaşıyor, dijitalleşiyor ve online hale geliyor. Gerçi Google temsilcisi buradayken bize teknoloji konusunda söz söylemek pek düşmez. Ancak Turing bu değişimi ayak uydurarak ülkemizde bulunan 62 tane UNESCO Dünya Mirası alanını 360 derece video tekniği ve 4K çözünürlük kalitesiyle filme aldı. 12 dakikalık genel bir tanıtım ve her bir alan içinde ikişer dakikalık kısa filmler hazırladı. İngilizce seslendirerek hazırlanan bu filmler Tunic web sitesine ve YouTube kanalına yüklenerek tüm dünyanın dikkatine sunuldu. Bunun adı yetinilmeyerek, dünya için yeni sayılabilecek olan sanal gerçeklik teknolojisi kullanılarak hem cep telefonlarına yüklenilebilen bir uygulama, hem de özel gözlükler ile birazdan izleyeceğiniz ve fuar alanında standımızda tecrübe edebileceğiniz gibi bizzat bu alanların içinde bulunarak filmlerin içinde olmanız ve kontrol etmeniz sağlandı. Bunu dünyanın her yerinden istediğiniz zaman yapabilirsiniz. Dünyanın ilk yerleşim yerlerinden birisi olan Çatal Höyük'ten başlayarak Hititlerden Truvalılara, İyonlar ve Lidyalılara, Romalılar ve Bizanslara, Selçuklar ve Osmanlılar'dan günümüze kadar Avrupa ve Asya'yı birleştiren konumu uzun ve seçkin tarihiyle kadim medeniyetleri ev sahipliği yapan bir coğrafyanın yani Anadolu'nun dünya miras alanları bu yeni video teknolojisiyle tüm dünyaya farklı bir gözle ve yöntemle sunulmuş oldu. UNESCO'nun titizlikle uyguladığı ve önemli aşamalardan geçerek kabul ettiği dünya miras listesine girmeyi başaran bu alanlarımız çok daha fazla ilgiyi, ziyareti ve keşfedilmeyi hak ediyorlar. Bu manada ülkemizin kültür ve turizmine bir nebze olsun katkıda bulunmuş olmanın gurur ve mutluluğunu Turing olarak yaşıyoruz. Turing, kültür ve turizm alanında çok daha farklı ve önemli faaliyetleri de imza atıyor. Bu toplantının ana gündem maddelerinden birisi olan 
sürdürülebilir ve inovatif turizm anlayışı kapsamında bizler alternatif turizm rotaları oluşturduk. Tüm dünyada haklı birine sahip olan Büyük Usta Mimar Sinan'ın eserlerini merkeze alan Sinan rotaları oluşturduk ve hem bu rotalar hem de Mimar Sinan'a özel rehberler yetiştirdik. Özel rotaları haritalar üzerinde uyguladık. İstanbul içi İstanbul veya İngiliz adıyla İstanbul in İstanbul projesiyle altı dilde yayınlanan kitabıyla İstanbul'un kültür ve turizm <gülüyor> ortamına yeni bir nefes katmayı hedefledik. Tüm bunların bir başlık olarak sizlere sunuyor ve ilgili materyalleri fuayi alanda bulunan standımızdan da temin edebileceğinizi hatırlatıyorum. Şimdi sizleri UNESCO Dünya Mirası 360 derece şovuyla baş başa bırakıyorum. Saygılar sunuyorum. The recorded history of Turkey stretches back at least 40,000 years. This part of Turkey, known as Anatolia, is one of the first places on earth where agriculture flourished, and as such, it is one of the cradles of human civilization. The Hittites in Anatolia were the first people to work with iron, introducing what would later be known as the Iron Age. Troy, with its 4,000 years of history, is one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. In 650 BC, the earliest known coins were minted in Ephesus, being shaped and struck on one side with a distinguished mark. Located within what was once the estuary of the river Kaistros, Ephesus comprises successive Hellenistic and Roman settlements founded on new locations, which followed the coastline as it retreated westward. Deriving from springs in a cliff almost 200 meters high overlooking the plain, calcite-laden waters have created in Pamukkale an unreal landscape made up of mineral forests, petrified waterfalls and a series of terraced basins. At the end of the second century BC, the dynasty of the Attalids, the kings of Pergamon, established the thermal spa of Hierapolis. The ruins of the baths, temples and other Greek monuments can be seen at the site. Founded by the mysterious Lycians, Patara became an important city in the Roman Empire. Its newly restored council chamber is fascinating to explore. During the excavations performed in Patara, ruins of a lighthouse that is almost 2,000 years old were found. By the first century BC, the Roman Empire had extended its rule to the eastern Mediterranean coast. Early Christians escaping Roman persecution nearly 2,000 years ago sheltered in the caves of Cappadocia in central Anatolia. In a spectacular landscape entirely sculpted by erosion, the Gurane Valley and its surroundings contain rock-hewn sanctuaries that provide unique evidence of Byzantine art in the post-iconoclastic period. Mark Antony gave Cleopatra part of Anatolian southern shore as a wedding gift. In 337, Constantine's new Christian city on the site of Byzantium was inaugurated as Constantinople. In 537, the great domed church of Hagia Sophia built on the orders of Justinian, was completed after only five years of construction. The 7th century also saw the rise of a new force which would eventually wrest Anatolia from the Byzantine Empire, making it instead the heart of a Turkish homeland. 
In 1099, Konya in central Anatolia became the capital of the Seljuk Turks. Seljuks created a unique artistic world with cultural links reaching out from the Anatolian heartland to Central Asia, the Middle East and the shores of the Mediterranean. Konya is also known as the city of Rumi, one of the great spiritual masters and poetical geniuses of mankind. The caravanserais, which developed in Asia as a new type of architectural structure with social function, was adopted by the Anatolian Turkish architecture. Osman Bey inherited the leadership of the tribal group, later known by a version of his name, as the Ottoman Turks. The city of Bursa and the nearby village of Jamal Kuzuk in the southern Marmara region illustrated the creation of an urban and rural system establishing the Ottoman Empire in the early 14th century. In 1453, Constantinople falls to a 21-year-old Turkish conqueror and the name of Constantinople changes to its present-day Istanbul. In 1557, Sinan completed his masterpiece, Suleymaniye, the Mosque of Suleyman in Istanbul. The building is breathtaking in its size and pleasing in simplicity. The Selimiye Mosque is an Ottoman imperial mosque, which is located in the city of Erdine. Considered by Sinan to be his ultimate masterpiece, it is one of the highest achievements of Islamic architecture. Throughout history, many civilizations have been born, flourished and prospered in Turkey. Over the course of time, different societies have caused their lifestyles, traditions and tastes to be reflected in the places where they lived resulting in the development of an extremely rich architectural heritage. This rich heritage has been supported by the geographical location of Turkey and by its own inherent diversity and exquisite natural assets. It has also been the foundation of a rich history dating from the present day back to when mankind was first forming civilizations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ali Deminer. And now, please let me introduce you to Claire-Marie Foulquier from Google Arts and Culture. Uh, she's Policy and External Relations Manager and she will present uh, the powerful tool for accessibility that Google proposed to more than 800 cultural institutions across the world. 1,800. 1,800, <laughs> thank you. Okay, if I can get my slide, please. So, perfect. So, my name is indeed uh, Claire foulquier and I work for Google Arts and Culture. Today, I'm here to tell you about how tourists meet culture using digital. But let me start by giving one example, and it's a personal one. So when I was invited to this conference, a few days um, after, I was starting to think about my next vacation in Christmas. And so because I was going to speak at that, that conference, I thought, why not recording the process step by step? of how I'm going to pick my vacation. So I picked a destination, it's going to be Cambodia, and then I spent about two hours online browsing websites to pick the perfect flights and the perfect hotel. And I'm sure you know how it can be a rabbit hole. Then, when the basic were covered, I spent about three hours bruising and surfing the web, finding uh, information about the cultural site, such as Angkor and all the temples surrounding it. Well, this was a personal example, but actually I'm not alone. Today, any journey 
touristic journey starts online. And it's really, um, it's really a reality with, with which we are working at Google Arts and Culture. So I want to share with you one number, 23%. In 2016, Google Arts and Culture commissioned a study with Oxford Economics. We surveyed six countries uh, in the Southern Europe and international tourism. What were the tourists searching for before going on vacation? So actually, when the basics are covered, accommodation, flight, and so on, people do search about culture. 24 23% of online searches by international tourism traveling to Southern Europe are related to culture. And it's actually even more if you count intangible heritage such as food and music into the mix. So people are searching online. So there is, there is actually even, um, there is an untapped potential because you have all these people searching online, but then the digital transformation of the cultural ecosystem is only starting. So at Google Arts and Culture, our aim is to bridge that gap. We are building technology that make the word culture accessible to anyone, anywhere, and I should add for free as well. How do we do that? So I will give you the free way we are doing it because it's quite a pragmatic approach. So first, you need to have online content. If people are searching for cultural related information, but there is no, nothing online, then it's again a missed, uh, a missed opportunity. So we have partners at Google Arts and Culture with more than 1,800 cultural institutions around the world. And we provide technology. So let me give you a few examples. First, the art camera. So we invented that technology to digitize in ultra high resolution artworks. So if my end was an artwork, thanks to this technology, you will be able to zoom in in this little crack and see it really vividly. So we are doing that to have you immersed in technology. When you prepare your trip, you want to know which kind of arts you are going to be confronted with. Another example is Museum View. So we have uh, Paul Chen from uh, Versailles right here. So Museum View, it's a technology where you can go inside a cultural institution. So at Versailles, for instance, you are able to visit the Galerie des Glaces and see it for yourself. So we have um, invented that technology, it's on Google Maps and you can circulate indoor. So we invented a few technology to really support this online content to be created. Second, you have to bridge that gap between on one hand tourists and on the other hand, the cultural content that has been digitized. So we use a few platforms. So Google Arts and Culture, it's a website, it's an app. Uh, we also work a lot with YouTube creators, especially to reach millennial and the young generation. But most of all, we are working with Google search. So when someone like me is searching for Encore in Cambodia, you will see example of a site, you will see maps, you will have several information um, of a content you will find to make your trip easier. Last thing we do is uh, we try to have a little bit of fun while do it, doing it. And also we try to reach the younger generation, the tourist of tomorrow. So we experiment a lot with artificial intelligence. One of our latest experiments is right here. It's called Art Selfie. So it's pretty basic and you might have seen, seen it because we, we had uh, more than 100 million of people using it since uh, September, our global launch. So you take a picture of your face, just like a selfie, and then you get matched with a portrait of our collection. We, we have digitized uh, six million art artworks, so it's quite large. The link with tourists here, it's, it, it's uh, work like a hook, actually. So you see the picture you get matched with, 
And the feedback we got is that actually quite a lot of people out of this million of uh, uh, people who tried the app went back to the museum, planned trips to the museum to see themselves and to see the artwork they have been matched with. So today I wanted to give you a few examples of what we are doing at uh, Google Arts and Culture to bring tourists closer to culture. So first, uh, we support online content creation. Second, we invest in uh, places, online spaces, where tourists can find the information. And third, we actually use emerging technology like artificial intelligence to create hooks to the younger generation. Finally, the message I want to leave you with is I'm not alone in searching online uh, and planning my, my vacation. Now every journey is starting online. So if you are designing your strategy, whether you are a minister or member of a tourist board, whatever, you really need to put digital front and center because it's where the people are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Fulke Gazagne. Um, and yes, just use this art selfie uh, features. It's really like exceptional, and I'm sure you will love it too. Um, please now welcome Mr. Tak Takario Onda, Manager Information and Communication Division at Topan Printing Company. And it will present how oh, he's working on 3D reconstitution and vanished place, places on site. Welcome. You have the floor. Uh, my name is Takahiro Hando with Stop Operating. Uh, thank you for giving a good chance to introduce our activities. Uh, Top Printing uh, was established in 1900, a uh, very old company, and through uh, our precise, precise photo uh, printing of fine arts, uh, we acquired many digital uh, image processing technology uh, for cultural assets. Twenty years ago, uh, to expand uh, our image processing technology, uh, we started uh, research and development of uh, virtual reality of cultural heritage. Uh, it was mainly focusing on uh, exhibition in museum. Uh, two years ago, uh, we uh, released the smartphone-based uh, virtual reality service uh, to, uh, for tourism. Uh, to respond uh, market demand. Uh, it enables virtual reality experience uh, in actual historical site. In Japan, uh, we are mainly focusing on uh, on-site digital reviving uh, of lost castles and providing this service on our original platform uh, named as uh, Street Museum. Uh, please watch a video. Uh, switch to the video, please.
Thank you. Uh, back to the PowerPoint presentation, please. As in this video, uh, we think uh, accurate visualization uh, is very important. Uh, it means not only uh, shape and color, uh, but also uh, academic perspective. Concerning our service, uh, we think benefits of digital technology as these three points. Uh, primary, uh, it increases uh, tourist satisfaction. The second is uh, expansion of accessibility. The last is uh, coexistence of tourism and conservation. Through 20 years of our activities, uh, we have produced over 100 virtual reality works in Japan. And we also have many overshare key events. Is it possible to back? Back, please. Back. Okay. This is not no. This is connect, not connected. No, no, no, no, no, no. Okay. okay. Thanks. Uh, finally, uh, let me introduce an Obashi example in Honduras, Central America. Uh, deep inside the excavation tunnel, uh, we can find this beautiful uh, stack relief uh, called as Margarita. Uh, but for conservation reason, uh, only permitted researchers can enter here. And this tunnel is uh, tough to walk and a little bit dangerous uh, because some uh, collapse and snakes are here. Uh, but by using virtual reality technology, uh, people can experience uh, this beautiful treasure easily and safely. To provide accurate information, uh, we apply a scientific approach. This uh, white image is shape data of the relief by uh, 3D digital measuring technology. As I am introduced in this presentation, uh, we are aiming to provide best information and service by latest citizens of technologies. Uh, thank you for attention. Thank you, Mr. Onda, for this presentation. And um, last but not least, Mr. Antonio Jesus Ingelmo Sierra from Spain, technical expert, accessible technology department at Fundacion ONCE. Uh, works on dedicated mo mobile application for, visit for visitors with visual, auditive, and cognitive impairment. You have the floor, Mr. Well, as I in the last speaking, it's going to be difficult to say something different or new from the brilliant presentations of my previous speakers, but I'll do it my best. Uh, in Fundacion Once, we are working on different ways to provide information at touristic sites, facilities, services, places of interest, and also at cultural sites, information about monuments, museums, artwork, artists. But this information must be provided to all, and I emphasize to all. So I've been hearing and watching 
some technologies which are really very revolutionary, but I think not all people are included on them. So this means that all information content, whether it's visual, oral, text, must be accessible for people with special needs or people with disabilities. So to accomplish this, we are working in Fundación Once of the potential of technologies such as virtual reality, cognitive services, and PICONS system-based applications. We have been asked by some uh, text makers to do beta testing on some virtual reality applications, which are designed for people with visual impairment, especially people with low vision. As you can see on the virtual reality uh, headset, most of these applications magnifies the sight of the image and also highlights the outline of the image. It has also the ability to adjust the con contrast color and adjust the brightness. And also it can reverse the color. So this is especially very useful for people with visual impairment because they can see much more clear an image when they are looking at an object, like a painting or a reading text. Also, we are working on cognitive services, such as uh, voice recognition, natural language processing, image and facial recognition. And we have, the, we have designed an accessible cognitive assistant, which is the robot you can see on the slide, which is used at museums to give information about artists and artwork to people with special needs. I have to, to say that it also has sign language video, and it can also read uh, visit cards. Um, finally, we have been working on museums on a system based in beacons. Beacons is the device you can see there. So this, Amuse, uh, this is an uh, application called Amuse, which is designed for iOS and Android. And I think the best way uh, to to show you how does Amis work is showing this video. Please, the video. Uh, could we play the video? Was your last museum visit fun? Were you able to enjoy all the exhibited content or did you miss something? as it was shown in another language, or due to a disability. The Amuse app for Android and iOS wants to change the way you see an exhibit. When entering, it will detect the museum you are in and present three operating modes. Cargando. Bienvenidos. Free visit. As you move through the various rooms of the museum, you'll be shown the elements displayed in the room you are in, with all types of information, texts, video, audio, images, trivia, etc. Furthermore, the app is accessible for screen readers and can include videos in sign language, audio guides and easy reading texts. Now everyone can enjoy all the museum's content. Guided tour. Also, if you are following an itinerary created by the museum, the app will indicate how to do it and will show you the content in the section you are viewing as you move around the museum, as well as how to obtain information on the various elements of each section. Game. 
Lastly, you can test your knowledge of the exhibit thanks to a game, which will allow you to have a collection of artists and their tools if you correctly answer questions associated with the various points of the exhibit. Furthermore, you can always find out exactly where you are in the museum or directly access the information for an exhibited element just by focusing on it. All of this is thanks to BT Low Energy Beepcom beacons installed in the museum and the Amuse online management tool, which allows the museum's manager to always have their information updated in a comfortable, simple way. And the most important thing, you don't need a different Amuse for each museum you visit. Once you've installed it, you may use it in any museum on the platform. Long live museums. Install the Muse. Yeah. Well, I just would like to, to add that uh, the, the robot we, we, I, I showed before is to use at the news or also at museums and the uh, people can get information by interacting with the robot. They can do by voice, they can recognize voice and ask for a specific information, which is really uh, very useful for people with visual impairment. Um, about Amuse is used only at museums. Um, uh, I just wanted to, to the last, my last words, I uh, want to thank to the organizations for giving me the opportunity to speak in behalf of millions of people with disability. And I want to, to, to take the chance also and, and ask the, the governments and the technicians to please uh, use this quite advanced and brilliant technology, but think in all people is people with a special need or disabilities. It's not only related with disabilities, also people with different cultural levels, uh, economical levels, social levels. And um, thanks for all your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we spoke a lot about uh, virtual reality and different tools to um, to to uh, interfere, to, to be a, a medium between uh, visitors and, and artworks. But b before returning to this, just one, one question, Mr. Renan. Um, you, you've made of, of your festival um, something quite big due to the network of Creative City. So I would just like to know uh, how, is, how it all begins. Um, do you have like a recipe for, for organizing such a big event? And, and one last thing, but it's the same question. Uh, is the UNESCO network of Creative City was uh, of any help on how you could uh, leverage this uh, network for, for your different festivals? Thank you. Je crois que la, la force des 13 villes dans le monde qui sont euh, villes créatives de l'UNESCO sur euh, les arts numériques, eh bien, ce sont 14, c'est 13 villes, mais c'est 13 festivals dans le monde. Donc, 13 festivals dans le monde, ce sont des festivals qui euh, euh, explorent à la fois les technologies, mais l'art. En fait, les sujets sont art, science et société. Et cette manière d'expérimenter la ville, c'est euh, se placer dans cette trajectoire qui est le futur urbain, mais le voir sous l'aspect humain, d'abord. La technologie doit être un renforcement de ces relations humaines à travers un médium, à travers des technologies. Et ce sens-là, il est développé, évidemment, par des appels à projets, des récompenses, des prix, euh, qui sont euh, autant sur la réalité virtuelle. Et c'est un partage à la fois d'expérience de ces villes, de l'ensemble de ces villes, à travers ces festivals, une expérience qui est portée euh, aussi par euh, un intérêt commun qui est l'inclusion sociale, c'est-à-dire l'art n'est pas simplement un ornement, est à la marge et sanctuarisé, si vous préférez, dans des théâtres, dans des lieux d'art, mais l'art eh bien, est projeté dans l'espace urbain ou dans l'espace sur un site et euh, c'est là que nous invitons tous les visiteurs 
euh, et pour la plupart, ces festivals sont gratuits, c'est-à-dire à vivre des expériences de réalité virtuelle et en même temps en impliquant les habitants, ce qui est un point très important dans ce rapport, évidemment, à un événement international, c'est surtout de relier, évidemment, les communautés scientifiques, les entreprises, les chercheurs, les artistes sur des objectifs communs qui sont, évidemment, ces objectifs 2030, c'est-à-dire nous sommes sur le développement durable et en particulier sur l'article 11, donc sur le fait que l'art est un élément qui se trouve plutôt au centre des préoccupations, des enjeux sociétaux et des enjeux des valeurs aujourd'hui que d'être placé comme un élément d'ornement. Voilà, c'est le sujet que, que nous souhaitons développer autour de ces 13 villes qui sont 13 festivals sur, sur les, à la fois l'art technologique, bien sûr, mais art numérique, sous, euh, avec évidemment les industries créatives. Les industries créatives aujourd'hui, les effets visuels, euh, je regardais attentivement ce que, euh, ce que Google euh, faisait sur ce terrain-là. Eh bien, vous avez aujourd'hui, eh bien, sur 200 mètres carrés, vous pouvez non seulement, avec un casque de réalité virtuelle, euh, évidemment, regarder à 360 degrés, mais vous pouvez vous déplacer physiquement dans l'espace et vous pouvez tactilement, maintenant, avoir, euh, euh, ressentir, effectivement, un site archéologique en y étant, en marchant, si vous voulez, sur un parcours qui vous est composé. Donc les, la situation qui est liée à la fois euh, à l'intelligence artificielle, et je pense qu'on a parlé de blockchain hier aussi, toutes ces possibilités ouvrent pour les artistes, pour les villes, évidemment, de cette notion de, pour le visiteur, de, de corps augmenté, c'est-à-dire de capacité eh bien, à, à pouvoir, à distance, et même physiquement, eh bien, euh, évidemment, de rencontrer une écriture, une émotion. Parce que l'art a cette distinction, c'est-à-dire d'être avant tout eh bien, au, au service, euh, je dirais, du, de, de l'émotion, finalement. Cette émotion, elle est portée par... Euh, c'est grandir, finalement, c'est amplifier, évidemment, euh, tout ce qui appartient, évidemment, à la valeur touristique. Thank you, Mr. Renaud. We spoke a lot, and uh, Mr. Ronald just um, mentioned it again, like the importance of the work with the local communities. So, Mr. Deminer, um, w when you work on um, a new project on the UNESCO World Heritage Site in Turkey, uh, how do you work with local communities when you want to, uh, to digitalize, to, to take videos of new places, and how do you market your product to the local communities? Uh, Az önceki oturumda da e, çokça dile getirildiği üzere e, turizm sadece e, bir tarihi mekanın veya bir e, doğal mekanın sunulması şeklinde anlaşılması doğru değil. Yaşayan, e, yaşayan bir dünyadayız ve e, bu yerleri değerli kılan aslında içindeki yerel halklar. Bu manada e, özellikle UNESCO'nun... E, Dünya mirası listesinde yer alan alanları çekim yapacağımız zaman öncelikle orada nasıl yaşandığını da bir e, anlamaya çalışıyoruz. E, yerel halk orada nasıl bulunuyor? Hem tarihi ve kültürel alanların içinde hem de bu alanlardan bir e, katma değer elde ederken neler yaptığını da anlamaya çalışıyoruz. Ve bunları da e, bir şekilde videolarımızın e, veya görüntülerimizin içine katıyoruz. Sonrasında... Bunu yerel otoritelerle de paylaşarak e, hem biz kendi imkanlarımızla dünyayı açıyoruz, yerel otoriterle, otoritelerle paylaşarak da diğer e, paydaşların kullanımına ve e, faydalanmasına sunuyoruz. Thank you. It's very interesting. <gülüyor> Claire Marie Fulke Gazan, at the end of your presentation, you invited the DMO and the Minister of Tourism to, uh, to be on, on, on web and digital first. And I heard that Google Art and Culture uh, is now partnering directly with some Minister of Tourism. Uh, can, you tell us, can you tell us more about that, please? Yes, sure. But please, first, um, allow me to make a more general point because um, I, 
I felt that there is some contrast between this session and the previous one. Uh, and this session might seem a bit cold. We have been talking about technology, showing you tool, but actually I want to stress that the human elements is really at the core of technology and what we do. Um, when I presented what we do at Google Arts and Culture, when I tell you we work with 1,800 uh, cultural institutions, it means people. It, it means every day exchanging with curators and people at the museum. Ourselves, we are a team of about 60 people. Uh, the women you have seen, uh, the Asian women you have seen at the end of my presentation, uh, on Art Selfie. Uh, she is uh, the one who created this artificial uh, intelligence algorithm. So I really wanted to stress the human elements and, and also uh, maybe give you a message around when you work with technology, you really have to not lose this human element because you need the feedback from the user, you need to see what people, real people are doing uh, when they are searching online. And from that, you can invent new use. So I wanted to, to give that message. So to your question, and, uh, and there, there is also a human element to it. So when I say we partner with 1,800 cultural institutions, it's mainly museum, uh, Opera, Philharmonie, and so on. But um, in, in the few last uh, years, and also I should as say the few last months, we have been partnering di directly with a few public bodies. One example is in India. We partner with Incredible India, which is the Minister of Tourism uh, board to promote, to promote the Indian brand um, externally. So with them, we have uh, done a 360 video of all the landmark in India, and also work with Google Maps to digitize uh, many of them. So we are only starting to interact directly with this type of, um, uh, of bodies, uh, because in many countries, cultural sites are owned in some way or relate to Minister of Tourism or Minister of Culture. So, it, so it's a way to reach more people when we can st uh, strike this type of, um, of partnership. So it's only the beginning for us. Thank you. Um, I'm, I've been told that we have really little time, so maybe one, if, if there's any question from the audience, they are more than welcome, maybe one, we have one or, one or two questions from the audience, but in the meantime, just a quick word from, from Mr. Onda. Um, do you think that, that the tools you propose to the, to the palaces on the site are uh, giving them a competitive advantage uh, against other sites, or, or do you see your products in the marketing plan? I mean, um, in terms of competitiveness of different cultural sites, uh, do the VR products that you produce uh, are giving a competitive advantage to those sites? You mean the uh, advantage of uh, our technology? Or? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, as a virtual reality products, uh, mainly focusing on uh, 360 view uh, and uh, uh, Bazai, uh, Bazai view, uh, like, like from like the drone, uh, but uh, we are uh, focusing on reviving of the uh, lost and deteriorated uh, buildings. Uh, it uh, it's not possible to uh, by using uh, ordinary uh, video. Uh, so it is only possible in, by using uh, computer graphics technology. Uh, it, and it increases uh, uh, interest of tourists, uh, especially in uh, fans of history. Uh, and so uh, in Japan, uh, Local government uh, is uh, prefer to promote uh, the uh, tourism, uh, and uh, uh, we have many achievements uh, in that. Okay, thank you. Is there any question from the audience? Okay, just so one last question for Mr. Ingrid Mosiera. Um, we, we we see the the smartphone applications that that, that you've uh, produced. 
Um, can you tell us more about the importance of user interface and user experience when you are uh, developing and creating uh, those apps and how you're working with a group of users to make tests before the release of the app? Thank you. I mean, I mean, how do you work in advance of the release of the production of the app and how do you work with test groups for people for designing dedicated apps for people with impairments? Well, I, I think I got it to your point. Um, we prefer to research and make applications of mobile phones and smartphones rather than any other devices, mostly because uh, most of the users with disabilities are quite attached to their mobile devices because they can't uh, adjust the option of features uh, of accessibility in all available in all operating systems, uh, Windows, uh, iOS, or Android. But this uh, level of customization is not possible in any other devices. Like, for instance, uh, audio guide used very common in museums. I don't know if I've answered your question. Okay, thank you. Is there any question from the audience? I can't see any. Okay, so I think we're good. Thank you all of, of, all of the, the speakers for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shen and all speakers for the interesting and insightful session. That was the last of our sessions here in Istanbul. We will now pass to a reading of the proposed Istanbul Declaration on Tourism and Culture. The declaration has been prepared by the three organizing bodies of the conference, the Ministry of the Culture and Tourism of the Republic of Turkey, UNESCO, and UNWTO. It is based on the discussions and outcomes of the sessions and addresses that we have seen on this stage over the past two days. I would like to invite to the stage Ms. Marina Diotolavi, Head of the Ethics, Culture, and Social Responsibility Department at UNWTO, to give the first reading of the declaration. Good morning, or oh, good afternoon. Uh, excellencies, dear delegates, UNESCO colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. After these two constructive days, it is a pleasure to share with you the draft Istanbul Declaration on Tourism and Culture for the benefit of all. Allow me to read um, the main points of this draft declaration. Please note that I will only focus on the essence and leave out the introductory paragraphs. However, you will be able to see the full text of the declaration on the conference website. Those who gathered here today reaffirm our commitment to strengthen the synergies between tourism, culture, and local community stakeholders in order to further contribute to the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development and the 17 SDG by A, encouraging closer coordination in the creation of evidence-based policies and strategies based on the measurement of the economic, social, and environmental impacts of cultural tourism. B, 
creating governance structures that link tourism and culture and bring the, a wide range of benefits to destinations, businesses, visitors and local population while maintaining a healthy balance between tourism development and heritage conservation and safeguarding. C, upholding the perspectives and, and interests of local communities in cultural tourism policies and strategies. And D, ensuring that public-private partnerships and investment approaches systematically address sustainable development challenges and advance distinct work opportunities within tourism destination and the cultural sector. The second point is shape cultural tourism for sustainable and creative cities by A, recognizing that tourism contribution is not limited to generating economic opportunities, particularly in cultural and creative sectors and urban settings, but is also an integral part of all dimensions of development. Further, that people-centered and cultural-driven tourism can be a catalyst for sustainable development, primarily in cities where cultural activities and institutions should be sustained and vibrant. B, raising awareness of cities home to a broad range of tourism destinations and resources as front runners in pro promoting sustainable cultural tourism. C, strength strengthening the role of cities around the world as local observatories for data and analysis, as well as laboratories of innovative practices towards sustainable development patterns in tourism which contributes directly to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. D, taking full advantage of intergovernmental and pan-regional organizations, as well as international networks to stimulate exchange and collaboration among cities and local authorities across the world for building a sustainable ecosystem in the tourism sector together with other stakeholders and actors. Point three, enhance the, global, uh, enhance the role of responsible tourism as an ally for safeguarding living heritage by A, raising awareness and ensuring much mutual appreciation at the local, national and international levels of the importance of the intangible cultural heritage. Two, or oh, B, sorry, strengthening the decision-making powers of local communities, including the bearers and custodians of intangible cultural heritage, as well as indigenous people, women, youth, and youth, with regard to tourism development and the best ways to improve their livelihoods. And C, establishing collaborative platforms between communities, tourism authorities and stakeholders with a view towards ensuring the relevance of the intangible cultural heritage of the communities concerned in order to promote respect for cultural diversity and human creativity. And the last point, advance cultural tourism for all through digital transformation by A championing technology-based uh, technology strategies and tailor-made solutions that advance research, congestion management, and uni universal access to cultural assets, including for people with disabilities and specific access requirements. B, using information and communication technologies to safeguard, archive, preserve, manage and promote cultural heritage while bringing competitive advantages for destinations and fostering social inclusions. And three, oh sorry, C, enhancing visitors' experience at cultural sites through technological innovation without trivializing the representation and interpretation of built cultural heritage. 
These are the main uh, points that the draft uh, declaration will, will, will hold, and will contain. And please be informed that this, this is a draft, and this draft is open to your comments. In the next 10 days, UNWTO will welcome comments to the declaration that may be included in the final version of the text. This declaration, the declaration, Istanbul Declaration, will be publicly available on our website and on the website of the event um, by the end of this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diotolavi. As mentioned by Ms. Diotolavi, remember that you can send comments to the declaration, if any, to UNWTO before it is published. As one conference draws to a close, we look towards the next, here to give a presentation of the venue of the Fourth World Conference on Tourism and Culture. Please welcome Mr. Satoshi Vemura, Vice Mayor of the Kyoto, Japan.京都は千年を超えて日本の都が全面的に移転してきます。
こんな町であります同時に京都は世界との交流を大切にしてきました世界の人々が民族宗教社会体制あらゆる違いを超えて自由に京都に集い新たな文化を創造する多様性が京都の持ち味ですそんな京都大学の町学生さんの町でもあります多くのノーベル賞学者も輩出しました伝統産業も素晴らしいしかし世界オンリーワンナンバーワンの先端産業も生み出すそんな町さらに今人気の漫画アニメも京都からですポケモン GO ゲームも京都からです私のおすすめは何と言っても食事がおいしいそんな京都笑顔いっぱいですそして春も秋も京都は素晴らしいでもね12月の京都がまた最高です12月に皆さんをお迎えできること楽しみにしていますどうぞ京都にお越しくださいミスター・ツラム・ポリカシュビリ、セクレタリー・ジェネラル・ UNWTO、ミスター・シンチュー、デピティ・ジェネラル・ジェネラル・ユネスコ、ミスター・メハメタ・エルソイ、ミニスター・オブ・カルチュー・アンド・トゥーリズム・オブ・ザ・リポブリック・オブ・トゥーキー、オーダー・ミニスター、レディーズ・アン・ジェントルメン、パーティスペーティング・トゥー・ザ・コンフェンス、オン・ビハーフ・オブ・ 1.47 million of all the citizens of Kyoto City. I would like to thank you for having an occasion of expressing our welcome to the next fourth UNWTO UNESCO World Conference on Tourism and Culture. All thanks、uh, to our friends of Istanbul, not only the people, but also the、uh, charming cat appearing in the morning. <laughs> For hosting with success the third conference, Teshki r e d e r i n g We're delighted to relay the baton from you, which shows the resonance between the two world famous ancient capitals. The name of Kyoto is nowadays recognized as one of the best touristic destinations of the world, with more than 1,200 years of its richest history. And a unique integration of the past and the present, we might say that the city becomes an object of admiration and envy among other cultural and touristic cities. But the reality is not at all la vie en rose. Kyoto has been severely damaged by numerous disasters, epidemics, fires, and wars. So was the transfer, transfer of, the, to, of the capital to Tokyo in 1868. Even today, the climate change menaces the ancient capital with the heat of mega typhoons and guerrilla rains. Moreover, the aging society、uh, could threaten the vitality of the citizens and communities which have supported continuously the activities and resilience of the Japanese millennial capital. Now, what we should do? Learning from the wisdom of our predecessors, revitalizing the virtue. Of our culture into the contemporary actions and innovating new values based upon old heritages. The Kyoto Eat, famous for being conservative at a glance, know indeed how to try and never hesitate to try. For example, we are astonished by the flood of tourists, which could nerve the daily life of urban locals. As countermeasures, we have introduced proper strict regulations and demand the good conduct of visitors and lodging owners. But a real success won't be found in the hostility. It will be achieved when we see the foreign visitors admire not only the patrimonial objects in the heritage sites, but also the urban sphere itself, and when they let themselves conduct with respect to the living history and culture. The aspiration of the place and the people. Our challenge goes on. And this never ending challenge can be, of course, shared with all the comrade historic and cultural cities in order to deepen our understanding and catalyze each other. 
Our solidarity will also contribute to illuminate some paths, uh, not a sin single, uh, to the sustainable development goals, a real hope to our world's future. This forum of experiences and ideas will surely indicate us the hints toward our concrete action. Regardless the peak or the bottom of touristic seasons, the city of Kyoto, an eternal lady, speaks softly to you, her beauty, her elegance and pride, and her sense of sophisticated hospitality in a decent but heartwarming manner. Now we are impatient to host you and discuss ardently on our destinations for the sustainable culture and tourism for our future generations with a respective pride and an open mind. Kyoto da Tekrar Grishonem. Nous vous attendons à Kyoto. Nos vemos en Kyoto. Chidu Taitien. Kyoto de Omatishitimas. And see you again at Kyoto, a millennial city of culture. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vemura, for that excellent presentation of Kyoto. Ladies and gentlemen, now our conference will proceed with the closing remarks. I would like to invite Mr. Manuel Butler, Executive Director of the World Tourism Organization, to the stage to give closing remarks. Her Excellency, Mr. Ersoy, Minister of Culture and Tourism of the Republic of Turkey. I would like to thank you for making this conference happen in the magnificent city of Istanbul, custodian of the Byzantine and Ottoman culture treasures, and today a beautiful and vibrant melting pot fascinating to explore. Thank you for the kind hospitality and congratulations on putting together such a high-level conference. Dear Deputy General Director of the UNESCO, Shinjuku, it has been a real pleasure to collaborate again in this third conference on tourism and culture. Much has been said about the ineludible link between tourism and culture, and this nourishes the need for us to continue to collaborate. Thank you again. Looking forward to strengthening our cooperation. Dear Minister, Vice Minister, distinguished guests, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that this conference has created an enable environment to form new partnerships, develop new projects, and encourage research in the field of responsible tourism and development and cultural conservation, with the ultimate aim of bringing the widest possible range of benefits to both tourists and locals. I hope it will bring us one step ahead towards our common goal to make cultural tourism as inclusive, accountable, and responsible as possible to the host communities can reap real benefits for mindful management, sharing and displaying their cultural uniqueness. I want to particularly thank speakers, moderators, interpreters, and our wonderful audience for contributing to the debates in such an enjoyable way. It has been very inspiring. After these two days, there is much food to thought. I think, therefore, I would like to announce that the next occasion that we can use to strengthen the seniors between tourism and tourism. I am delighted that the fourth UNW UNESCO World Conference on Tourism and Culture will take place in Kyoto, in Japan. Mr. Satoshi Unamura, the mayor of Kyoto, on behalf of the UNWTO and UNESCO, I thank you for your commitment to the responsible the development of cultural tourism. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Butler. We will now invite to the stage uh, Deputy Director General of the UNESCO, Mr. Xu Jin. His Excellency, Mr. Ersoy, Minister of Culture and Tourism of the Republic of, of Turkey, Secretary General of the World Tourism Organization. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, Istanbul is a very good place to people to meet each other because this is a place where continents meet. So I'm very happy to be here on behalf of our Director General, Ms. Audrey Azoulay, to, it is my great pleasure to join you here today for the close of the third UNWTO UNESCO World Conference on Culture and Tourism. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the government of the Republic of Turkey for hosting, hosting this event and to the UNWTO for once again partnering with UNESCO in its organization. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past two days, you have shown your determination to place culture at the heart of our efforts to create, craft a more sustainable form of tourism. It is encouraging to see such active engagement on the part of so many ministers and high-level representatives from both public and private sector. In 2014, in Siem Reap, when we met for the first global conference on tourism and culture, we, decided, we de declared the need for, to forge new partnerships. Now, in 2018, we are deepening this commitment, working across sectors to ensure that culture, to cultural tourism benefits all people everywhere. With over 1.3 billion people crossing border each year, this must be among our top priorities. Tourism undeniable has the potential to contribute directly or indirectly to most of the sustainable development goals enshrined in 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Developments. These include Goal 8 on inclusive and sustainable economic growth, Goal 12 on sustainable consumption and production patterns, and Goal 14 on the sustainable use of oceans and marine resources. It is clear that tourism provides a tremendous opportunity to support local economic development while breaking down barriers between people as long as it is managed responsibly and inclusively. Cultural tourism now accounts for around 40% of world tourism revenues, which in itself contributes some 10% of the global wealth. Cultural heritage sites, and in particular, those inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List are often focal points for job creation and the local development. UNESCO is deeply committed to strengthening the links between culture and tourism in a way that responds to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. With the UNESCO Cultural Conventions on Heritage Safeguarding and Creativity, we must build on the 2017 Moscow Declaration on Tourism and Culture and the UNWTO Global Code of Ethics for Tourism. Today, yesterday, several UNESCO creative cities illustrated how cities are working to make tourism work for visitors and local residents alike through the improvement of public services infrastructure and cultural amenities. 
This includes the preservation of cultural heritage from historic sites to living heritage, expressions and traditions, which is often a valuable means of nurturing creativity and innovation. Yet cities cannot do it alone. Responsible cultural tourism management that fully respects and sustains local, country, local communities requires international cooperation. Mass tourism, environmental degradation, and over-commercialization will only accelerate without our intervention. One solution is the responsible use of digital technologies, which can help expand access to culture for all, while modernizing our approach to tourism management and heritage preservation, promotion, and marketing. This is one reason why UNESCO, with the support of the European Union, has launched the first web platform dedicated to sustainable travel in Europe. The World Heritage Journeys in the European Union platform features 34 World Heritage sites and four curated itineraries, encouraging visitors to stay longer in each destination and explore some of Europe, Europe's lesser known heritage sites. This is just one example of how new technologies can help spread the benefits of tourism more equally while countering trends such as over-tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's declaration provides a valuable roadmap for our efforts towards truly sustainable tourism. UNESCO looks forward to continuing to work alongside you in this process. UNESCO and UNWTO are also pleased to announce that next year's conference will be held in Kyoto, Japan, and we thank the Japanese government and the city of Kyoto for their hospitality and generosity. Thank you. Once again, I thank you for your engagement and commitment and look forward for our ongoing collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strujin. Now with the final remarks to close the proceeding, I give the floor to the host of this year, Mr. Ahmed Haluk Tursun, Deputy Minister of Culture and Tourism of the Republic of Turkey. Sayın Genel Direktör Yardımcısı, Sayın Genel Sekreter Yardımcısı, Saygıdeğer Bakanlar, Kıymetli Misafirlerimiz, Efendim sizleri Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Kültür ve Turizm Bakanlığı adına selamlayarak konuşmama başlamak istiyorum. Ama aynı zamanda karşıda görmüş olduğunuz dünyanın en önemli mimari miraslarından ve İstanbul'un göz bebeklerinden Ayasofya Müzesi'nin eski başkanı olarak da selamlıyorum. Ayasofya'nın hemen yanında Topkapı Sarayı var. Osmanlı medeniyetinin çok önemli bir merkezi. Yine aynı zamanda Topkapı Sarayı'nın eski bir müdürü olarak da sizleri selamlıyorum. Bu anlamlı çalışmanın Türkiye'de olması, İstanbul'da olması bu iki mekan adına sizi selamlamamı gerektirdi. Ama aynı zamanda burada göremediğimiz ve UNESCO'nun gerçekten dünya mirası olarak tescil etmesinden büyük onur duyduğumuz Göbekli Tepe adına, Troya adına, Çatal Höyük adına, Ani adına, Diyarbakır Hevsel Bahçeleri adına ve diğer bütün UNESCO dünya mirası adına da selamlıyorum ve hoş geldiniz. Burada bizi de bulunmaktan dolayı büyük memnuniyet duyduğumuzu ifade etmek isterim diyorum. Dördüncü toplantının konferansın Kyoto'da olması dolayısıyla yapılan 
tanıtım e, programlarında yine Kıyota içinde bin yıllık bir başkent olduğu ifade edildi ve çok kültürlülük olgusu vurgulandı. İstanbul'un devamında yine İstanbul'un özelliklerini taşıyan yani çok kültürlülüğü, çeşitlilik içerisinde birliği, l'unité dans la diversité dediğimiz şekilde taşıyan başka bir şehrin de önümüzdeki toplantıya ev sahipliği yapmış olması, yapacak olması bizim açımızdan sevinç verici ve çok anlamlı bir gelişme olacak. Şimdiden Kyoto'ya başarılar diliyorum bu dördüncü toplantı için. Efendim üçüncü Dünya Turizm ve Kültür Konferansı'nı başarıyla tamamlamış bulunuyoruz. Başta bu etkinliğin düzenlenmesine öncülük eden Birleşmiş Milletler Dünya Turizm Örgütü'ne, Birleşmiş Milletler Eğitim, Bilim ve Kültür Kurumu'na gerçekleştirdikleri sunumlarla toplantının amacına ulaşmasını sağlayan bütün değerli konuşmacılara ve yurt içinden ve yurt dışından gelen bütün seçkin katılımcılara, konuklarımıza, dünya halklarının refahının herkesin yararına olacak şekilde artırılması yolundaki çabalarından ötürü çok teşekkür ediyorum. Sizleri biraz önce kısmen saymaya çalıştığım mekanlar adına eski ve yeni dünyanın dünyanın cazibe merkezi, kültür başkenti olarak vurgulanan İstanbul'da ağırlamış olmaktan büyük memnuniyet duymaktayız. UNESCO üyesi ve Dünya Turizm Örgütü üyesi ülkelerin kültür ve turizm çevrelerini üçüncü kez bir araya getiren bu toplantıda turizm sektörünün sağladığı kalkınmadan azami düzeyde faydalanırken bir yandan da kültürün korunması ve desteklenmesi için ülkelerin ne gibi çalışmalarda bulunduğunu yakından anlamaya çalıştık. Yakından baktık ve değerlendirdik. Ortaya çıkan sorunları saptamanın ve kültür ve turizmi toplumla kaynaştırmak suretiyle sürdürülebilirlik kalkınmaya ağırlık verilmesi için izlenecek politikaların belirlenmesi ve kamu özel sektör işbirliğinin bu doğrultuda desteklenmesinin fırsatlar yaratmadaki önemini beraberce değerlendirdik. Dün ve bugün gün boyu süren oturumlarda kültür turizmini güçlendirmek ve yenilemek için yaratıcılıktan faydalanmanın ve bu yaratıcılığı sürekli şekilde ortaya koymanın yollarını tartıştık. Bu bağlamda somut olmayan kültürel mirasın nesilden nesile aktarılarak tanıdık bir çevrede devamlı hissi oluşturduğuna ve sürdürülebilir turizmin bu aktarımdaki katkılarına dikkat çekmeye çalıştık. Somut olmayan kültürel mirasın en önemli öğelerinden bir tanesi Türkiye adına tescil edilen Türk kahvesidir ve kahve sohbetleridir. Buradaki her kahve ikramımızda da bu somut olmayan kültürel nesnenin Size tanıtımını yapmaya çalıştık. Oturumlarda turizm, kültür ve yerel paydaşların kültürel mirası değerlendirirken bir denge gözetmesini sağlamak için nasıl birlikte çalışılabileceğini ve dünyadaki gözde destinasyonların kültür turizmi aracılığıyla sürdürülebilir ve kapsayıcı bir kalkınma modelini nasıl uyguladıklarını birlikte irdeledik. Kültür turizminin şekillendirdiği bu kalkınma modelinin Kadın, genç, yaşlı, engelli gibi toplumsal hayatın dışında kalmış herkesin ama gerçekten herkesin yararına olması için teknolojinin gün be gün gelişen imkanlarından nasıl yararlanabileceğini tartıştık ve erişim zorluğu yaşayanlara dahil tüm ziyaretçilerin eşit şartlara kavuşmasını sağlayan evrensel örnekleri inceledik. Hanımefendiler ve beyefendiler, turizm ve kültür üzerine İstanbul Deklarasyonu ile Taşlandırdığımız bu konferans, turizm vasıtasıyla bölgesel girişimcilik ve istihdam fırsatları oluşturularak sürdürülebilir, erişilebilir, kapsayıcı, korumacı, yaratıcı, dengeli bir kalkınmanın sağlanmasına odaklanmaktadır. Bizlerin ortak hedefi, turizmde yeni hizmet ve fırsatlar yaratmak, uluslararası karar verme mekanizmalarında güçlü bir temsil sağlamak, doğal ve kültürel mirasın kullanımını teşvik etmek, Tarihi, kültürel ve bölgesel özelliklerimizin benzerlikleriyle farklılarından faydalanarak kişilerin yaşam ve kültür standartlarını yükseltmektir. Sevgili konuklar, bu konferansın dünya kültürü ve turizm açısından verimli sonuçlar doğurduğuna iştenlikle inanmaktayız. Konferans çerçevesinde ele alınan gündem maddelerinin sonucunda ortaya çıkan bildirinin, kültür ve turizmin, bir arada değerlenip değerlendirilmesi konusunda ufuk açıcı bir 
vizyon sunmasını dilerim. Konuşmamı bitirirken bugün bu tarihi şehirde, bu dünya kültür başkentlerinden biri olan İstanbul'da sizlerle birlikte olmaktan dolayı duyduğum büyük memnuniyeti şahsım ve bakanlığım adına ve ülkem adına dile getirir. Saygılarımı sunarım. İlginiz için çok teşekkür ederim efendim. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for hosting this event. Thank you as well to all of the, all of the distinguished panelists, speakers, the Minister of Culture and Tourism of the Republic of Turkey, UNESCO, UNWTO, interpreters, technicians, and of course our audience for making the Third World Conference on Tourism and Culture possible. Now I officially close the conference. Thank you. And I want to inform you about the technical visits. As you can see from the program, there is a technical visit of a uh, beautiful city of the Istanbul planned uh, for today. At 2 p.m., uh, transfer from Hilton, and tomorrow, December 5th, at uh, 9 a.m., transfer from Conrad Hotel, and 9.30 a.m. from Hilton. Thank you. <laughs>